Hi Year 12, this is Mr. Lim again. This is our last video on amines, just their physical properties. Okay, so these are the physical properties that we've always been dealing with, right? So just remember, uh, melting boiling points, solubility, and vapor pressure. So let's get to it. Okay, so the amine groups adds hydrogen bonding to the molecule. So remember the two requirements of hydrogen bonding. One is a H bonded to an NO or F. Okay, and number two is that you need an N, O, or F. Okay, and so uh, amines, they fulfill both of these because when they have the NH2 group, they have the H bonded to the N, O, or F, and they have the N as well. All right, so you can see some hydrogen bonding between two ethane amines. Ah. Okay, here's one ethan amine, and here is another ethan amine going the opposite direction. And where will the hydrogen bonding be? Will it be here? Ba -ba Mr. Lim, why can't you learn how to draw? Okay, so it'll be between that one there and maybe perhaps even that one there. Okay, all right. So between the hydrogens and the nitrogens uh, on those particular things. All right. You should be take note that it actually goes to the lone pair of electrons on that nitrogen, all right? That's what allows that double bond, uh, that hydrogen bond to form, all right? And then uh, we'll go into why that, uh, what make differences that make, especially when compared to uh, the hydrogen bonding within oxygens and alcohols, all right? So amides have a moderate melting and boiling point due to the hydrogen bonding in the amide group. Okay, so the melting and boiling point is dependent on the sum of intermolecular forces. Again, you really have to talk about the sum of intermolecular forces. Uh, okay, so all amines will have what intermolecular forces? Dispersion, dipole, dipole, and H bonding. Don't forget that it has all three of them. Okay, so since oxygen is a more electronegative element, as well as there being less non-bonding pairs on the nitrogen atom, again, so that's what we're talking about, the amine group you have a single non-bonding pair however with an alcohol group uh, oops. Uh, with an alcohol group you have two non-bonding pairs okay the hydrogen bonding between uh, one amine and the number uh, of hydrogens on one amine and the nitrogen of another amine is not as strong as the hydrogen bonding between the hydrogen of an alcohol and the oxygen of another alcohol so effectively this is more electronegative than that, and so therefore this has a larger negative charge than that one, right? And so therefore uh, it creates a greater uh, electrostatic attraction, and therefore they hold together more, and therefore they have a higher melting boiling point because they need more energy to overcome uh, those forces holding them together. All right, so... Amines have a similar boiling point to comparatively sized aldehydes, okay? And so that should take note that your aldehydes actually don't have hydrogen bonding, yet uh, it has enough of a dipole to actually have similar boiling points to something that actually has hydrogen bonding, all right? Um, and it's because of on it only having one lone pair. And even in an oxygen, in an aldehyde, the oxygen has, again, two lone pairs, all right? And it's also on the end of a molecule, so therefore it makes it a lot more polar, all right? So therefore this is quite negative comparative to the, uh, that negative there, all right? So let's move on. Uh, again, amines are soluble in water, especially with ones that are low soluble mass, okay? So solubility is the ability to form bonds of similar or greater strength between solute-solvent compared to solute-solute and solvent-solvent, okay? So the hydrogen bonding between water and amines uh, uh, means that small amines are completely miscible. So how do you draw that? So here's your amine. When you hydrogen bond it with some water, should I put the hydrogens on the left hand side or the right hand side on the right hand side and therefore it can form some hydrogen bonds with that water where those non-bonding pairs are all right so that will release a bit of energy for um, it to dissolve as long as it's not too long okay the larger the amine the greater the effect that the carbon end of it has 
Okay, so in other words, you've got a longer hydrocarbon chain. Okay, this side will be producing energy, right, enough to hopefully overcome most of this. But if you get too long, the, uh, the amount of energy produced over here will not be sufficient to have for the energy required to break those bonds or to insert those carbons into the water. Okay, so the longer you uh, your carbon chain is, the more energy is required, and therefore, oops, and therefore you're not going to dissolve as well if you're a longer um, carbon chain on that amine. All right, um, hydrocarbons can't form strong bonds of water, thus the solvent solute don't produce enough N. So that purple N doesn't produce enough air energy to break the green part there. Right, and then finally, vapor pressure, high vapor pressure, low sum of intermolecular forces. Vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by vapor particles, blah, blah, blah. You've seen this before, hopefully. Maybe you go watch the very first video where I explain vapor pressure, and then you can have that explain. Okay, so again, last thing, amines, when you produce them, or when you have them, they have a pungent odor, which means they smell bad, right? And that's something that is characteristic of amines. So if you have what's an observation with something turning into an amine or something with an amine, you can just say it has a pungent odor. Right, and that's it. Uh, we'll be moving on to amides next.